Have you ever heard someone say that medications like Ozempic or Wagovi will eventually stop working and in order to get them to work again, you need to cycle off the medication and reset your system? Well, for a bit of a spoiler alert, that's not how the GLP-1 based medications work. And today, I'm going to be busting the myths regarding downregulation, desensitization, and even potential damage to the GLP-1 receptors in your body when taking these medications. And we're also going to talk about why cycling off the medication might actually do more harm than good. Oh, and if you haven't already done so, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of the evidence around the anti-obesity medications. Now, for a quick recap for anybody that might be new here, Ozempic, Wagovi, Zepbound, and Maugero are GLP-1-based receptor agonists. And what these medications do is they mimic the natural GLP-1 hormone that is produced by our body, which helps us to regulate our appetite, our blood sugar, and can ultimately help us to lose weight. And for many, they have been life-changing medications. But unfortunately, the influencers and self-appointed experts have been sprinkling a lot of confusion across the internet. First, they warned us that these medications were dangerous and gonna kill us all. Then they started advertising and selling these natural GLP-1 boosters. And now they're all talking about how you need to cycle the GLP-1 medications or you're gonna end up damaging your receptors and your body. It's always fascinating how things can start to change as money gets involved. So let me address the easy stuff first. Now, people in this realm will often cite a couple of different studies that have demonstrated downregulation or desensitization to the GLP-1 medications. However, they often neglect the piece where these studies were done with cells in a petri dish. And if you didn't realize it, um, what happens in a petri dish with a bunch of cells is not quite what happens inside of the human body. Which, up to this point, we have demonstrated no desensitization or damage when we look at the human body itself and we provide these medications. It turns out that human biology is, is far more complex. And hey, are you ready to take control of your health and create real, lasting changes? If that's the case, then you need to sign up for my new online community, Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub, where we empower you with evidence-based tools and compassion to help you realize and reach your goals. We provide expert guidance on managing stress, emotional eating, and creating sustainable habits. It's also a judgment-free community where we can all work and grow together. You see, managing your weight is not about the quick fixes. It's about creating a balanced and fulfilling life that you truly enjoy. And we can help you to feel confident, empowered, and unstoppable. So head to the description down below, check out the various links and get more information and come and join us on your empowerment journey to your healthiest and happiest life. I can't wait to see you there. So the idea that the GLP-1 receptors get worn out or stop working because of the GLP-1 medications is simply not true. And we have a number of real world studies to demonstrate that. First off, when we look at the SELECT trial, which was done with Wagovi over a four year period to demonstrate the cardiovascular benefit that these medications can provide, as you can see in this graph here, over that entire four year period, people initially lost weight, but then their weight stayed pretty much the same for that four year period. There was no weight regain or increase or anything, indicating that the medication didn't wear off and didn't stop doing what it was helping them to do. So that's the first piece of evidence that we have. Next, we wanna take a trip over to the step five trial. Now, the STEP5 trial was a two-year randomized control trial that was looking at Wagovi compared to placebo. And what they did over the period of that trial is they actually assessed cravings, appetite, hunger, and all of those things to determine is the medication from that perspective wearing off as the time went on. And what did they find? Well, it turns out that appetite and cravings were significantly and persistently reduced over the full two year period. And further, there was a correlation between the greater amount of reduction in appetite and cravings, the more weight the individuals lost. Which makes sense, more craving reduction equals more weight loss. So the takeaway of this is that the GLP-1 medications continue to keep working over that period of time and they don't stop or don't desensitize or get Get used to the medication. The medication keeps working in the background even if it seems like that number on the scale isn't going down. Now I know some people will be jumping up and down and saying but I'm no longer losing weight so that must mean that the medication's not working. And again that's not true. You see if you've reached a plateau particularly for about a year out from using this medication 
Well, that's perfectly normal. You see, after some period of time, everybody is eventually going to reach a plateau. And every single drug trial that we've done to date shows a similar pattern. We get a quicker rate of loss at the start, and then things plateau or flatten out as the individuals have lost a substantial amount of weight and continue to maintain that weight loss. When we look at the individual drugs, Wagovi on average led to a weight loss of about 15% from baseline, whereas Zepbound led to a weight loss of approximately 21% from baseline. The big problem that we often run into is that people have very grand expectations in terms of the amount of weight they expect to lose. You see, on average, people are expecting to lose 35% plus of their base baseline body weight. And they expect to lose weight in a very linear, straightforward fashion. So each day, each week, each month, there should be steady and consistent loss ongoing forever and always until you decide to stop. But unfortunately, the reality is much, much different. And as I said previously, Wagovi led to a 15% loss from baseline, whereas Zepbound led to a 21% loss from baseline. So expecting to lose 35% of your baseline weight is something that we usually don't even achieve with bariatric surgery. That is a lot of weight. So what exactly is going on here? Because people will feel like the medication is no longer working. Not only have they plateaued, so we've explained that piece of it, but they will also feel like their hunger and cravings are increasing and coming back. And in some cases, people might even be regaining some of the weight they lost. Well, the unfortunate part that we have going on here is that biology is kicking in. The reality is, is that the more weight you lose, the harder it's going to be to lose further weight, and it's gonna be even harder to maintain that weight loss long term. But it's not because the medication is not working or anything like that, it's because the body is adapting your body undergoes a process called metabolic adaptation. So your body, as you lose weight, is gonna slow down your metabolism. You're also going to just burn fewer calories by simply existing because you're gonna be smaller. We're gonna see an increase in hunger and cravings. And in general, you're gonna feel lazier. Your body is doing what it does best when you are losing weight and in a calorie deficit. And it's really effing good at these things because 30,000 years ago, if it didn't kick these systems in, well, well, you would die. Unfortunately, our biology, our bodies don't realize that we're no longer living in a world that existed 30,000 years ago, and it doesn't recognize that there's an overabundance of food everywhere. Now, the medications are helping us to manage this biology and keeping it at bay. It's bringing it down to a much lower level than if you didn't have the medication in where you were currently were. So if you're getting some hunger and cravings, it would be much, much higher and much, much worse if the medication wasn't there. And as we're gonna see next, as soon as you take away that medication, well, all of that hunger, cravings, and such like that comes screaming back, and we ultimately gain a lot of weight back. Hey everyone, I've been using a Yee Soul fitness bike for the last few weeks, and I gotta say, it has been a game changer for my cardio routine. Now we know that cardio is key for heart health, but it also plays a big role in boosting your energy and well-being. And this bike has been a great tool and my go-to to get my heart rate up and start releasing some of those great endorphins that keep me going through the day. The thing I love about this bike is that it's solid in design, it's super sleek, and it comes with a 1080p screen for crystal clear video watching or having someone on your workout screen that can kind of guide you and support you along via the Yeesoul app. It is definitely an awesome Peloton alternative and it comes at a fraction of the price. And you can get another $100 off the regular price when you use my promo code Dr. Dan, that's D-R-D-A-N at checkout. So check out the link down below in the description and grab your bike, treadmill, what have you today and start having a great workout and improving your health with Yeesoul Fitness. Now, what would happen if we did cycle the medication, if we did take a break from it and then go back on it? Unfortunately, we don't have specific studies that look at and answer this question. However, we do have other studies that we can look at that tell us what happens when you stop the medication. And one of the really well done studies was the Surmount 4 trial, where everybody in the study was at initially given tirzepatide and titrated up over a 36 week period. And then at 36 weeks, half of the people were switched to a placebo and everyone continued on for the rest of the period of the study. And as you can see, it's pretty clear that the people that stayed on tirzepatide continued to lose weight and keep on going, whereas the people that were switched to the placebo ultimately regained the weight back. So 
if you cycle off the medication, you're likely going to gain the weight back. And it might make losing weight and maintaining your weight in the future even harder. And that's because anytime that our weight is cycling up and down over relatively short periods of time, we are further amplifying the effects of metabolic adaptations. So that's going to mean bigger slowdowns in our metabolism, a sharper increase in hunger and cravings, and that's all going to lead to a greater difficulty in trying to lose weight. Ultimately, the cycling on and off may lead to next level yo-yo dieting, and we already know the harm that that can cause. As indicated in this graph here, you can see that metabolic rate is in blue, calorie intake is the black dotted line, and your weight is in red. And as you can see, with each successive weight loss attempt and weight regain, metabolic rate continues to get depressed again and again, even though the weight is going up and up and the caloric intake is staying about the same. And this is ultimately one of the biggest burdens that occurs with yo-yo dieting. Well, that doesn't include also the psychological component that's gonna come from it as well. So to sum this up, the GLP-1 medications don't stop working. They don't desensitize, they don't damage, they don't do anything like that to the GLP-1 receptors inside of the human body. Yes, within a Petri dish, we can see a down regulation of GLP-1 receptors, but that doesn't translate to the actual clinical individual human being. Further, weight loss plateaus are totally normal and expected. And unfortunately, cycling on and off the medications are probably gonna do a whole lot more harm than actual good. So please don't fall for the influencer hype and trust the healthcare professionals that you're working with and trust the science. And I hope that answers the desensitization, damage, and cycling on and off medications questions. So that is it and that is all my friends. And if you enjoyed this video and it blew your mind, then you definitely need to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my next video as well feel free to share it with anybody that you think might get some benefit from it as well check out my other social media channels and all of the links that I have down below and of course don't forget to sign up for the Dr. Dan's Empowerment Hub if you want to create lasting and real changes for your health and until next time you beautiful people please always remember it is the small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks